guess it depends what the stakeholder's point of view is. If you're an employee, sustainable means they, that they will um, be humble and powerful and excellent and they'll adapt and I'll keep my job and I'll build a career and I can count on that. Not count on that as you know Japanese, but count on that as as long as I do my part in this relationship, they'll do theirs. Unsustainable is um, uh, let's get excited about some really bad idea. Let's convince ourselves we're right. Let's not listen. Let's power down the path and let's fire you for my decision. That's not sustainable. And so if you're an employee as a stakeholder, sustainable is better than not. If you're a consumer, sustainable is important, both from a product perspective and from an environmental perspective. If you're a shareholder, I don't know about that, to tell you the truth, because uh, despite all the conversation about social responsibility investment, it doesn't show up from my perspective. Um, and so most of our shareholders uh, um, are predicated on knowing when it's no longer sustainable. Most of the people who do business in Timberland stock or anybody's stock do it on the basis, I, I buy it before you know what it's worth and I sell it before you know what it's worth. And so it's absolutely not a sustainable notion. What's sustainable there is I know something you don't know. I have an insight you don't have. And so if Timberland is consistent and predictable, that, is, that takes the fun out of it for um, the, the, the folks that invest in, in turning over their positions. Uh, so with the exception of the shareholder, um, on the level of financial results, sustainable seems to me an all-win, no-loss proposition. The way the shareholder values sustainable is if, if we can generate a return for it. So if we can create a culture where the men and women who are, uh, who are Timberland are committed to it, uh, not just in loyal terms, but in engagement terms, we'll be more innovative than our competitors. If we can create products that are more innovative than our competitors and, and find ways through different media strategies uh, which is innovative again, to make the consumer care about Earthkeeper footwear from Timberland, then we'll outsell our competitors. And then our shareholders will say sustainable is interesting to us insofar as it generates superior returns. I don't believe that the, the, the enlightened shareholders at hand yet. The enlightened consumer is much closer to hand than the enlightened shareholder. And so my view of that is, um, Bill Clinton said this once, he said, the world's made of yes, no, and maybe. Spend just the minimum amount of time with yes, you need to feel reinforced. Ignore no and focus everything on maybe. And so if the shareholder's view is like, whatever, uh, then my view is fight with the consumer. The conversation is if I can convince you that um, Mountain Athletic, lighter, faster, further, sexier, and green is a unique proposition and you will buy our trail running shoes, not North Faces, the shareholder will think, whatever you're doing, you keep doing it. And I'm, I sound borderline cynical there. I'm surely skeptical. I think the, the shareholder is going to get, the, the shareholder should have woken up by now, but they haven't. I saw something on Twitter about bottled water or something like that, and uh, I, I, uh, our team made the mistake of letting me do Twitter. And so I, I can like get around my handlers. And so I just blasted the note said, I'm getting rid of bottled water. I can't solve the world's universal problems right this minute, but it makes no sense for our employees to be buying bottled water. They don't, and no, it's not Big Brother, it's none of that crap. I'm just telling you, um, I can give our employees a raise by banning bottled water. And so I thought that would be cool and I'd be hip and my kids would be impressed. None of it worked. Everybody's like, what the hell are you doing? I like my bottled water. What about the soda machines? Like, oh, for crying out loud. So then I got the equivalent of the daycare team together. I said, will you guys, since I've said we're gonna do this, will you make me look not stupid and make it happen? And they got together and they wailed away at it, and we made bottled water go away. And everyone at Timberland thinks it's a pain in the neck. Everyone at Timberland thinks it's kind of cool. And everybody at Timberland thinks, knows, they know, Victoria, that something big's coming. And it wasn't bottled water. Bottled water was an exemplar that said, the status quo sucks, and we need to challenge it. Existentially, politically, spiritually, practically, professionally, good enough ain't good enough. It's time to rock it up a little bit. And so, okay, I'm going to ban smoking next to Timberland. People now go outside the smoke. I'm saying, not. A, I'm, I'm going to post armed guards. Shoot them. No cigarette smoking. Because I watch the government just bludgeoning to death this notion of health care. In the meantime, I'm paying for health care at Timberland. We're self-insured. And, and people in our community are smoking cigarettes. And you and I are paying for it if you are a Timberland person. So I, like, no, 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 no. Come on. Back to the ownership mentality. No riders on the storm here. We're going to differentiate health care rates at Timberland. If you take care of yourself, you get one rate. If you don't take care of yourself, look, this is America. We're not tell you what to do, but we're going to create incentives or disincentives because, hey, come on, we're not getting any younger here.